Mo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today we are loaded. Well, not that way loaded. Loaded in terms of we got at least a full solid day and some of making a new metal shop stool. As you guys may or may not know, uh, not only is this a wood shop, a metal shop, but uh, four or five days a week, it's also an entertainment area where I have usually four or five of my friends and family that come over here and we have our favorite alcoholic beverage and play some games and watch a sporting event or two on my big screen TV. If you look over there underneath my storage rack, you might see three wooden stools. That is what I use when they, came up, when they come over and I've got one metal stool. And that metal stool seems to be the favorite around here. First one in the garage grabs a metal stool. For some reason, it is the most comfortable. Whether it's got a bigger seating area, it's a little bit shorter, it's just all in all more comfortable. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to make at least one, maybe two, we'll see how it goes, metal shop stools. So let's take a closer look at the metal stool that I have, and then we'll get started on this project. Okay, well, here we go. Here's the story behind this, uh, this little metal uh, shop stool here. Uh, I found it in someone's trash, and at one time it had a cushion uh, attached to the top of it with four screws. Um, it, the foam was coming out of it, the material was all ripped and shredded. Uh, the frame itself was all rusted through. It might have been painted white or a light color like that. It, uh, it was just all rusted and it was just trash. But I looked beyond that, and uh, it looked like it was all structurally sound and it just needed to be cleaned up. So I brought it back to the shop, pulled the cover off the top of it, got my wire wheel, went through the whole thing, cleaned it all up and painted it shop gray and there it is. And it's been like this for a few years and it is the favorite. Now I'm using this as a comparison to the wood stool that I'm sitting on right here where um, this one is a little bit taller and the seating area is a little bit smaller and it, believe it or not, it's only about two, two to three inches taller, but that makes a really big difference in comfort. So this is what we got. It's roughly 26 inches tall, 25 and a half, something like that. And that's what we're going to get close to doing with the new one. And I plan on using an uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter angle line by one eighth thick. And we're going to be using that for most of the framework. And I went down to my local uh, lumber supply store and picked up a really nice piece of cherry wood. And uh, yeah, about an inch and a quarter thick. And we're going to be slicing that up. We're going to glue it all together and put a nice finish on it. And that's what we're going to use uh, for the top. So, um, oh, also, we're going to put some rubber grommets on the bottom of the new shop stool as well. I'm trying to make it as close looking as this as we possibly can and as close to the height. It'll be a fun little project. So with that said, Let's get started. Okay, so I got started with the uh, inch and a quarter by one eighth angle iron and just measuring up everything uh, to all the right lengths that I need for the pieces. Uh, and, you know, just using my chops off for that with a metal cutoff blade there. Yeah, it works really good. You know, the saws are a little bit slower RPM than a regular cutoff saw, not to be mistaken. Uh, that's what makes those blades work so well. And here they are, all cut up. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how I. I used all this material and cut everything up, and all I had left were these two little pieces. No waste. So then I decided I was going to do a little layout um, on my welding table here. I thought maybe that might be easier to kind of line things up. You know, there's a lot of angles here. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, once again, I'm building everything as I go right here. And, and I thought, uh, well, you know, I'll just put a little layout thing here on my table. And maybe that will help me to get the angles right. But... Uh, you know what, you know, one mistake after another, but, you know, eventually, yeah, we get the angles right here. And once we did that, um, I started putting pieces together. And, uh, all right, now I need to, uh, once I get everything put in where I need to put in, uh, I'm going to need to notch these these pieces angle for the seat brace and the foot rest there. You can see that I'm, I'm marking things out because I, I do want those to fit flush all the way around. And so I'm going to have to... Uh, cut those out of that little section cut out of the angle iron once I got everything all figured out um, and started cutting things out I'm just using my cutoff uh, blade right here cutoff wheel 
works pretty good for small detail stuff like this and just cut the angles out getting everything I need which I think you know I build everything as I go and and uh, you know it's just kind of a it's kind of one of those things where you you know well you think it's gonna work you hope it's gonna work and so you know kind of trial and error but you know I'm getting it all together and you know some of the gaps were, were bigger than I want but nothing uh, nothing a welder can't uh, fill in and nothing a grinder can't grind out so I uh, just used a piece of angle iron right there with a the ground clamp I just wanted to lightly rest it on the workpiece so I didn't want to move anything around while I was tacking everything into position. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, we're getting things getting things done and be sure everything is as close as I can get. Um, tack everything together. And once I did that, uh, this is where things started getting a little fun. You know, I changed the design right here in the middle of everything. So now I decided I want to cut a little bit off of this, uh, these pieces because I wanted them to fit in there a little bit differently. And... Uh, so I went over there and we just uh, did that. A little more angles, trickery. Some angles that got to be right uh, in order to fit right in. Of course, I figured that out the hard way. But uh, anyways, once we got them done, I uh, was able to get them in there and place them where I need to. And you can see some of those gaps are bigger than you'd like. But you know what? Uh, we're going to just weld everything in and we're going we're gonna to grind everything down. So I struggled quite a bit right here trying to get this thing. And it, 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 I never thought it would be such a challenge as it was. But... Uh, you know, with all the different angles and, and everything, trying to get everything square and right uh, was was pretty difficult, I got to say. I had a hard time with it. But anyways, once we got, uh, I got it all clamped up and, and got everything shifted around where I need to, we got her done. Well, after banging it around, making a few adjustments, uh, you know, I put everything together and I tacked everything together and, uh, you know, it was just a little bit out of whack. Um, I just was able to square it up by pushing on one end and the other and everything's all squared up and she's uh, looking pretty good now. So uh, the only thing left to do, well there's a lot of things left to do, but the first thing I want to do before this thing gets out of whack on its own by doing anything else is I'm going to get everything all welded out and get everything ground down and uh, then we'll carry on. Let's do it. Check this out. Last year I bought a Lincoln uh, welding jacket for about 150 bucks. Nice jacket, but I found this one online a few months ago. $22. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Uh, granted, it's not quite as nice as the Lincoln, but it's the only thing I could find to fit my fat ass. So it'll work good. So I started welding everything out right here, and uh, you know, once we uh, got going here there's just a lot of angles and a lot of small detail welding a lot of big gaps due to my errors and you know learning as i go here and these angles are just crazy but uh anyways we uh just got everything welded out here and, and you know these welds are definitely not pretty by any means i knew they weren't going to be and i weren't trying to make them that way at this point i'm just trying to fill the gaps i'm trying to fill the holes and and uh, get everything built up so when i get around to uh, grinding everything down um you know, everything will look a lot better than what it is. Things are going to get painted anyway. So, it's all good. So, you see me doing it. Just filling all the holes and doing all the welding. And uh, ultimately, we got it all done and got it ready for grinding. Well, looks like it's all welded up. Time to get the grinder out and do some grinding. Okay, so we're going to grind everything down. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and... and be using my flat disc uh, on an angle grinder for that, but before I do, I'm going to change this one out right here. Uh, these uh, these flat discs right here, I ended up buying these things from Lay Valley Abrasives oh, about a year ago, and I, I, I these things are amazing. You know, they're, they're about five, six, seven, eight bucks at uh, the big box store, Home Depot, or hardware store, wherever you may get these things. Uh, I bought like 60 of these things for. Uh, they were about a buck eighty nine a piece. I think I paid a hundred dollars and I had like sixty of them or sixty five of them or something like that sent shipped to my door. These things are pretty amazing. They work really good. For the price, you can't beat them. Once I got that new flap just put on there, uh, that made short order and grinding down these big fat ugly welds that I had and filling everything up. But uh, you know what? Once everything was all cleaned up, looks good and it's ready for paint. Okay, we've got everything all grinded nice and smooth. Looks pretty good. 
everything is nice and smooth and uh, got all that done started to take shape so the next thing to do is get the legs put on it let's do it okay for the legs i'm just using three quarter inch black pipe and i'm going to be cutting four pieces about three inches long so i'm just going to go ahead and mark them out right here and uh, i'm going to uh, allow an eighth of an inch for the blade uh, on this so what we've got we've got three inch we've got a six and an eighth Go on here nine and a quarter 12 and three eighths right there so if i cut on the line each one of those i should end up with four three inch pieces That's it. yeah my ingenious idea here um whatever yeah, i was trying something different um it was close they they were pretty close uh, anyways, once I got everything all cut out, uh, took them over to my vertical sander here and just kind of softened up the edges, deburred everything, got everything cleaned up. Took them over there and uh, tacked them in place. And, you know, I could have probably just welded these things out just the way, where they were. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I felt that I needed to take it one step farther. And, um, you know, I, I got an idea to round over the remaining edges of the angle iron to kind of round the edges, and uh, that's fine. But... After I made a few adjustments here to the pipe, um, be sure everything is fitting nice and square. Yeah, that's what we did. Laid it up there, and uh, this is what I brought my acetylene torch, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not, I'm not positive, but I, I think this is called a rosebud. Yeah, it's just like a heating tip, and uh, you know it really gets down to some business right here. And so this is where I was, uh, you know, heating up the remaining edge of the angle line. I thought ah, this will be pretty cool. I'll just bend this thing down you know, flatten around and kind of give it that rounding look, kind of similar to what my existing uh, uh, metal st uh, shop stool has. And, you know, I guess it's an okay idea, but man, that turned in a lot more work, turned out to be a lot more work than what I thought it was going to be. But, uh, eh, you know, the bottom line is I got to try something I've never done before, use the heating element there, the rosebud, and, and uh, you know, do a little bit of blacksmithing, <laughs> I guess you might call it. Um, I don't know. Anyways, we got it all done, and uh, once uh, once I went through the, the motions and got everything bent over, and, and uh, it started to take shape, and so at that point, um, I just went ahead and, and started welding welding everything out, and I didn't want to have any gaps, and once again, that turned out to be more than I thought, and you can see there's just a lot of weld going on there, and then everything got uh, pretty big, and so, okay, now... I need to, you know, grind all of that down, and wow, and that turned out to be more because I actually was grinding some of the uh, uh, edges of the angle off and trying to make it that, give it that round look. Anyways, whatever, I, I got it all done, and uh, you know, all in all, it's going to get some paint, and it's going to look pretty good, and uh, and I said, okay, let's go ahead and uh, pre-drill these holes for the, uh, the wood... Uh, uh, seat that we're going to be putting on this thing. This is just quarter inch drill I'm, I'm putting in here. I'm going to be using some number 14 screws about an inch long and uh, I'm just getting these holes pre-drilled and then get everything uh, ground down nice and smooth and then uh, this is the paint, uh, you know, shop gray if you will. And uh, once I got everything all painted, put the thing aside and now it's ready to start working on the um, the seat. Now, I need this seat to be 14, I think, or 14 and a half inches square, and this piece is only about uh, 9 inches, so what I'm going to do here is I'm cutting this thing, and I think about 2 inch pieces, I can't remember, inch and 3 quarters, and, uh, and we're going to glue them all together, and I think overall when I glued everything together, I think it was around 15 inches square to, to get started with, and I'll trim that down to the right size when we get done, but you know, running anything through my planer right here to get all the edges just right both ways, and uh, put everything all together, got the glue on it, and uh, once we got that done, just flipped it all over, glued it, clamped it all together, and uh, it, uh, you know, again, that, that's about a 15 inch square piece it turned out to, to be, which, uh, you know, we're going to get the thing trimmed down, but uh, hey, got it all glued together, I let it sit overnight, and that worked out pretty good, and here you see me taking it off the next day, and I went through the process with my uh, sanding palm sander here and I started out with about 40 grit and went 60 100 120 150 220 and and it took it took some time but man it turned out really nice and it is perfectly flat and smooth and here you see me running it through my uh my table saw getting it to 14 and a half inches square I think it is that I needed 
and and I'm going to talk a little bit about those burn marks here in a minute. But uh, I just grabbed this. I'm going to say it's a paint can. I guess it's not a paint can. It's Henry's roofing sealant, and that seemed about the right size of the radius that we needed that was on the existing uh, metal stool. So I just uh, brought that to all four corners and marked it out. And then uh, once we got it all marked out, I was able to take it over to the bandsaw and cut this out. And yeah, it worked out pretty good. This is the old Rikon bandsaw that I got. And I gotta say, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to use this more than, uh, than, I, uh, than I normally would. And I, I really like it. You can see the burn marks I was talking about earlier, you know. Um, this is really super hard work, uh, wood to begin with, and I, I really think it's my, my portable little table saw there. I, I think my fence is not lined up with the blade, and it has a tendency to bind, and I think that's what's causing it to burn. The blade is brand new, um, so I think I've got some other issues i got to try to figure out. But I'm just using my glue gun right here, and I'm gluing that thing down to my workbench, and uh, it makes for a temporary... Uh, so it holds it in place so I can get my palm sander here with a quarter rounding over a bit and go around and once I uh, did that on both sides you were able to just pound that off of there and here's I get my palm sander and doing the finishing touches right here getting rid of those burn marks on the side and getting everything looking like it should and and once I went around and did everything uh, man finished it off with that 220 and it is as smooth as glass I gotta say I'm pretty pleased the way that turned out and then this epoxy right here, I've had it for about, oh, six months. I got it for a project that I was going to do, and I haven't done it. At least I haven't done it yet. But uh, anyways, we mix this epoxy up, and, uh, you know, stuff takes about, tw this particular epoxy takes about 24 hours to dry. But once we got it all mixed up and spread it on there, um, just move everything around with this, uh, with this brush right here and catch all the edges. And once you get everything... Uh, you know wiped around nice and evenly and then put some nice even strokes on there it kind of like self levels and uh, it dries really nice as you can see it turned out pretty good pretty pleased with it okay well the epoxy's finally dried and uh man i gotta say i i don't i really am pleased the way this turned out i i don't uh, i've never really done this before and uh, it is just a really good like a bar top finish uh, i'm really pleased the way that turned out the epoxy I used took took about 24 hours to dry for each side, but uh, uh, I know you can get some faster drying epoxy. I happen to have some on the smaller volume, and it dries in about 15 minutes. Uh, this stuff did take a long time, but the outcome is really nice. So the only one thing left to do, and that's to get this thing mounted to our uh, shop stool and uh, finish this project up. So let's do it. All right, so I just uh, picked the nicest side, which it really didn't matter as both sides were equally as good. And I just kind of got this thing as squared up as I possibly could on the bottom. And once I did that, I went ahead and uh, started drilling it out and driving them in with uh, my DeWalt uh, uh, drill and impact driver using these uh, number 14 uh, one inch screws. And that worked out really good, solid. And then I just finished it off by putting the rubber grommets on the ends of the legs. And I got to say, I'm really happy with this turned out. It's a pretty good project. Well, there it is. The shop stool is complete. And I got to say, I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. My goal was to try to get this to look as close as I could to my original shop stool in the size and the shape and the height as I possibly could. And for the most part, I did that. Now... The only thing that I did a little bit differently on this one, obviously, is this has got the cherry wood uh, hard surface top, and I went maybe a little bit overboard on that. I probably didn't need to do that, ah, but what the hell. Uh, and the bar bar top finish, uh, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, I don't have a lot of experience in that, but this really turned out pretty cool. I'll be using this in some other videos as well. And I even went as much as putting the rubber grommets on the bottom of the legs to match as close as I could to the original bar stool. I really enjoyed making this video. Maybe you should try to make one for your shop or garage. Maybe it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it was a fun project. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe for more videos. And, by the way, I like this so much that I made another one. So, I have three now stools that are similar. There you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.